there's also the vulnerability aspect in the physical sense that if you face weaknesses, this is what you will feel. You will feel very vulnerable because you suddenly you become so conscious of all the weaknesses that you have in a body right, that you maybe didn't want to even face. I think this is one of the starting points from all these problems is that you run away from your weaknesses, you run away from feeling vulnerable, and you run away straight into the big hug of your ego that always, you know, is there ready to <laughs> catch you. You see lots of people, they think they're strong, they think they're athletic, but they actually, because they use so much steroids and their training is so non-functional, they, that they actually have negative athleticism. It's worse than the average person in many <laughs> cases. It gets a lot more validation with the fake stuff. If you are actually have the bodybuilding look for, from the regular people, you actually get lots of more admiration and respect and validation compared to the real deal who could be like a just average fit guy. Like a shirt on, they don't even look very strong, but they could be like insanely strong, insanely athletic and insanely capable. Even though you feel like it's very small, like your core self, you feel like it's very weak compared to this big ego and, and this validation that you're getting, that core self will start to grow and it will grow extremely strong. You manage to like get rid of this validation because that's what it mainly was for. It was it wasn't for the real athleticism. It was because it is kind of respected in the culture that you're at, like in these forums and these videos and these other guys. So you kind of go into it. But like, and the, the, this for me is like that there is an actual like a sacrifice and that sacrifice is sacrificing your ego because the ego is the one that is kind of wants that validation. It wants to just show off. It wants to look like strong and it doesn't really care if it really is strong, but it gets, you know, you get all the happiness from people thinking you are strong, people thinking that you have something. And, you know, you could live your whole life like this way, in this happy bubble where you, you never test yourself, you know, in this sport or anything. And I think, I feel like most people don't. And if they do, like, what, what happens is they're like, well, uh, I'm not going to even try it. Like, it doesn't, it's that it doesn't work so well, but you don't really face the reality of yourself, even though you face these adversities. And, like, you go try some sport and... Okay, your knee is hurting. Well, you know, maybe this is not for me and it's not so good anyway. Like you just maybe make these excuses and, and just accept your situation. And even before you talk about like people in this culture, they accept the pain and they think that's part of it. And I think this is the big problem. And this is the problem with the ego. Like for me, this was the same thing. I was so, I was so hugely and so strongly stuck in, in these uh, feats of strength. Like that was the image that I was had built up over years. And I, you know, like Samoli, we invested a lot of time and training hours into being able to lift this weight, being able to do pull-ups with 50 kilos or something, being able to do muscle up with like 25 or 30 kilo. And that was the life. And and then you want to hold on to that because that is all you have actually. And there's nothing, if you take those away, there's nothing, you, you know, broken body that cannot handle sports or like athletic movements or martial arts. And that is what left there. But this sacrifice, help, I remember very well this moment that I had, and this was in Croatia where I made like the final decision. Like I made this decision, okay, like I'm, I was, it was literally like kind of like late at night, like dark room, I was doing some training and like, like I'm, I'm willing to like lose it all. Like, like I'm gonna, the muscle, the weight, whatever, like it, it cannot be more important than the health, the long-term health and of my body and the good feeling that I can have in my body. Now, the sacrifice, <laughs> of course, it was more of a sacrifice of the idea of the strength. I wasn't really sacrificing like my athleticism. I was doing the opposite. Like I have, this is where it started to build up the abilities that I have now to the point where I can really do all this stuff don't feel pain. I can just go fully forward. And I have this, this, this intuition and this awareness of my body and this trust. I have this trust in my body and this ability to do all sorts of training, whatever training I want to do. And this is like the beginning point there. But initially I made a huge, huge sacrifice in my mind that all this weight stuff, all this ego stuff, all this validation, it has to be gone. Like this, there's something that is more important than this thing that has been fed to me that I believe to be true because everything every cell in my body was like yelling this is not the way to go like this is this can't be the way to go and I just decided to trust that intuition trusted feeling and 
take on the journey and go fully into it. And this is <laughs> this is where we ended up from that. Yeah, I would say that in all aspects of life, not just in training, there's a big difference between being the real deal, being the real and versus being the like an imposter, being the fake. Like for example, in Dubai, there are lots of people who are kind of pretend to be, pretending to be successful. Like they wear like fake watches, they wear like fake brands, and they pretend to be like, yeah, I'm this rich, successful guy. Mm. But in reality, like it, it's not the case at all. It's like all fake. And the same if you go some, let's say, bodybuilding gyms, you see lots of people, they think they're strong, they think they're athletic, but they actually, they almost, because they use so much steroids and their training is so non-functional they, that they actually have negative athleticism. Like it's like, it's worse than the average person in many <laughs> cases. <laughs> yeah, yes. really, yeah. and, but it's the same, it's like, but these per people, they, to people who don't really understand it very well, they think, okay, this guy is massive, this ha guy has massive muscles, he must be really strong and really athletic, but that's not the case. He, he, he actually would lose to like very small BJJ guys, he would lose to very small boxers, he would lose many very small football players in many aspects of fitness. Mm. But, and the same goes with the other pretenders who like, who like, pretend to be the real deal, but they're not. But but like you said, like Ero said, like the ego gets this almost the same validation, whether it actually gets more validation with the fake. Yeah. It, it gets a lot more validation with the fake stuff. If you, if you are actually like have the bodybuilding look, you will actually, from the regular people, you actually get lots of more admiration and respect and validation compared to the real deal who could be like, a, just look like a average fit mm. guy at, or who could, some people, they don't even look so like without li, like a shirt on, they don't even look good very point. strong, but they could be like insanely strong, insanely athletic and insanely capable. And the same, the same with, you know, all these pretenders, like you don't know, like some guy, some, there are lots of rich people who don't show up at all and they get they don't get any of the same attention that's yeah I never actually thought about it that you you know the if you go to this or you you kind of feed the ego like that's that's what really gets you it gets you the attention that is specifically for what it's for and you get even a massive amount of it because for every regular person like you said if you see this bodybuilder it is hugely impressive for us it, this changed because Yes, if you see a bodybuilder, like, oh, that's a big, that's a huge guy. But before it used to be like, I want to be like that, like, that's that's good. But now it's more mm. like the, these guys who can't scratch their backs and the, if they move, like, their whole body moves in one junk. Like, yeah, can't. and they get tired of, like, going upstairs. Yeah. The like, now when <laughs> we see some of these guys, it's like you immediately can say, okay, this guy is not dangerous at all. Like, this guy is not athletic at all like this guy has negative athleticism mm -hmm. and negative fighting ability many times yep 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 that, that's the thing like it, your perception of the body changes and you, your perception of your own body changes because for me now when when i'm look at my own body i don't only look at like how, how big am i i look at also how am i really feeling inside of my body like that's the most important thing because we've talked about this even before like if you have pains you know, your confidence is, is very low, actually. And I can't believe these guys who still, like, they walk like they're, you know, on top of the world, but at the same time, you know, you don't know really what's going on, on in there. And the same like, goes for many traditional martial artists as well. They mm -hmm. walk like they have the confidence, but it's, you know, it's, it's just because you are like a black belt or really high level master in your, Tra tra traditional martial art which mm. is may not be even like practical or even effective it doesn't actually mean anything yeah when it comes to real fighting and real self-defense i think 
the one of the big parts from this is what we talk about, like, you know, sacrifice the ego and, and getting rid of this stuff is, you know, and I think somebody maybe touched on this subject is, is this weakness. Like, yeah, you mentioned, like, we see weakness as potential in disguise. Like, and people talk about nowadays, it's very almost like a trendy to talk about vulnerability, like, like a man should be vulnerable and sit this way. And like, I get this, but th there's also the vulnerability aspect in, in the physical sense that if you face weaknesses, this is what you will feel. You will feel very vulnerable because you suddenly you become so conscious of all the weakness that you, you have in a body maybe that you maybe didn't want to even face. Like it's a big thing. Like uh, if you at some point experience this sort of wake up, like I explained, you know, you're big, you can do this and you can do that. And at the same time, you have to accept the reality that you are not very functional. And if you would try to do something uh, athletic, you know, you probably wouldn't do very well in it. So this ability to sacrifice the ego, face the weaknesses very like deeply, go into them, like literally face weaknesses, even feel them in your body and tr like specifically go and train them over and over time and feeling it, like going through it, like this is not like some body part, like my hip, for example, when I had a, a pinchment and, and pain in my hip and I couldn't like really do high kicks or anything, like I had to just repeatedly go on it. I had to find like separately, like try to locate these areas in my hip, these different articulations in the flexion or extensor and combine that with different hip rotations. And I was trying to find which muscles are not functioning here in my hip, different stretching dr uh, drills as well. You have to be able to be very present in these moments. Like you cannot run away. I think this is one of the starting point from all these problems is that you really, you, you run away from your weaknesses, you run away from feeling vulnerable and you run away straight into the big hug of your ego that always, you know, is there ready to <laughs> catch you. But uh, that's... Yeah, I would say that the main lesson here is that forget about what other people think and become the real deal. Don't fake it. Don't be the fake guy, whatever, in anything, any area of life. And just mm. focus on becoming the real deal. And actually, when you focus on the becoming the real deal, it kind of eventually you will get also because at the top, this the real deal are the only ones who survive. But only at the only at the lower levels, it's more about you know faking it. But the lesson yeah. here is that just don't prioritize like the ego and other people's opinions of you and instead focus on yourself, focus on your body and focus on becoming the real deal in all aspects of life, especially yeah. when it comes to body. Like be willing to humble yourself for a moment and you shall be like raised <laughs> because <laughs> that's in a way it is. You have to go to the, your core Yeah, like in the, in the Bible, <laughs> it says like the humble will be exalted. Yes, that, that's exactly what it is. And if you cannot humble yourself and go to the to your own true level where you can only start to really build yourself up. You will never really build yourself. You're only building an uh, image. You're only building a bubble of yourself, which is like pops and it's it's all gone. And then you there's what is only left is the real core self of you that you never really built up. You never developed that. So all I'm saying is initially, you know, you even though you feel like it's very small, it, like it's very weak, like your core self, you feel like it's very weak compared to this big ego and, and this validation that you're getting. That core self will start to grow and it will grow extremely strong. You just need to go to it. Like someone said, don't, don't fake it. It's better to be like broke and be real than to be fake and, you know, like rich or something like that. Like <laughs> just <laughs> just be yourself, you know. Start from where you are and, and and focus on your core self. Like it feels very good, and that is what people can also sense.